But that's not the important thing. It's not important whether I can work with, uh, es with or without estimates. What's important is are estimates helping us and why are we doing that? That's, it's more important to be questioning these things than it is to have a solution to these things. So I think what I'm going to do is have everybody, so we've got a block of post-it notes right here in your hand. So everybody's going to need to take at least one post-it note. So let's go ahead and just pass those around. You take some off for yourself, a handful or whatever, and pass that block around so everybody can get, be able to split the block up. Like if we, if we a batch going one way and a batch going another way, and a batch going back this way. So that you can all get some, and you can all get some to pass. You can all get some, you can pass this down or whatever. So that there's only enough, and we, this is more than enough uh, post notes to do a full workshop with this many people. So the first thing that I want to do is to answer this question. I want everybody to get a post note first, because I want this to go really quickly. I'm going to gather them up on this, um, on this uh, whiteboard. Now that's probably not in the uh, camera zone, but if it isn't, I can move it over as well. What I'd like to do now, uh, everybody's got a post-it note and there are some pens everywhere. And even you people in the back table, you can participate if this is already uh, too much. This test gets to be over very much. Here's what I want to do. I want to capture a one word answer to this question. So I'll move this out of the way a little bit. In essence, what is an estimate? I want to know one word that captures what an estimate is. Not what we use them for, not what the estimates are of, but what is an estimate. Write one word if you can. I know in Sweden if you group words, you can have one word that has <laughs> ten words in it, but that's not what I mean. Get one word, try to write it in English if you can't, use whatever language you're most familiar with, and we'll gather them up here. So everybody do that as quick as you can. It will take a minute or less to gather that information. So this is a favor to me. You, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I'd like to get that from you if we can. So when I work with programmers, they can always do this with one word. Managers have a lot of trouble using one word. Let's see what you can do. Should I put it up? Yeah, bring it on up. Bring it on up. As soon as you have it, bring it on up. You might as well get up yourself and do it as well. Lead up and get up. Okay, so I think I'm going to this over. It's a light on. That's kind of interesting. So I wonder if I can get the light without the words. Give me one second. I'm going to duplicate the slide. That was how much time you had when you finished admirably. I'm going to duplicate the slide. Then I'll make a slide with no words on it. And now we got a bright light if we bring this up. It's going right onto our board. Is that too reflective? We'll see how badly that works. Okay, we're going to start, and I'll just take them and I'll group them up. A guess, a guess, a guess, a guess. There's a few guesses. Guess, guessing, guess. You must have seen me do this workshop before. Guess, guess. Here's one that says an estimate is a contract. Uh, a guess. I guess. Okay, now I'm going to ask some questions. So here's one that's, well, we'll come back to that one. Um, an, estimate, an estimate is an approximation. What is an approximation? Oh, yes. Oh, it's something that's not exact. It's not exact. So it's something that's not exact. So we'll move that off of that. What about time? Is an estimate time? We can do an estimate of time. Very well said. We can do an estimate of time. Is an estimate a value? We can do an estimate of value. Right? Okay, so we're going to put that over there too. Does that, that make sense? Does that mean value is in like units? How do you mean? And did it mean like customer value or did it mean an estimate is a value as a unit that you assign to something? 
who's most valuable. So what, how, how are we using that word? I, I didn't, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so the way that I would, I would group this is we can estimate how much time or cost of something, and we can estimate the value of it before we've done it. Is that all right to put that there? It's something we can make an estimate of. Okay, so we, we've got approximate, we'll put this over here. It's a calculation. I think I'm most meant to ask a guess. It's a calculation with a question mark. With a question mark, exactly. Okay. I'm going to leave that as guess. Okay. So here's another one that's approximation. So there's two approximations. An estimate is reasonable. Well, I don't know how to group that. I don't know how to group that. It might be in its own corner. Might, we'll give it its own corner for now. We'll put it down there. It is, oh, someone will have to read this for me. And do you know what that means? <laughs> Do you know what that means? Uh, oops, yeah. I mean, yeah. Estimate. It's an estimate in Swedish. It's right? an estimate, it's an estimate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, kind of a circular reason, right? Um, it's an estimate in Swedish. Okay. So I'm not sure what to do with that. I'll put that down here because I'm not sure what it, Oh, this is kind of an interesting one. An estimate is ignorance. I wrote that. Okay. Esti estimate things because you don't know. So, so I would say that's kind of close to being a guess. Does it fall under guess, do you think? Close to, but not exact. Okay, so we'll put it close, but not exact. <laughs> a plan. An estimate is a plan. Do anybody, do any of you actually think of an estimate as a plan? How do we think of an estimate in relation to a plan? It ends up in a plan. What's that? It ends up in a plan. So it's something we use to make a plan. So I would say that could be an end result. So we have contracts, that kind of goes over there. It's a quantity. Is an estimate a quantity? Or is it something we <coughs> estimate the quantity? Uh, estimate of a quantity. Does that make sense? Who wrote that? Can we put that in that row, column? Quantity. No one will fess up that this was there. <laughs> you just wrote it. OK. So it's a contract, it's a plan, it's help. Ooh, how do we mean that? Or do we need help because we're using estimates? <laughs> how do we mean the use of the word help? Yeah, help with the exclamation words. <laughs> Is it help with a question? With an exclamation oh, word. Help. Like help, yeah, exactly. So it's a help to help us maybe make a plan? Is that sort of what we mean by that? Yeah. It helps us. It helps you get something. the manager off your back. It helps get the manager <laughs> off your back. If you were mostly developers, we would find more things like that. It's an mm, aiming. something point. Aiming point. Aiming point. Oh, that's good. That's two words. Two words. I don't know, but I'm trying to write some together. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll allow it, because most of you got one word. You're so I've got a picture thing. I think I'll show you in a moment or two of, um, of a group of CIOs and CTOs that answered this, and you'll see how they did. Um, so it's, a, it's an aiming point, which is that close to being a guess, or is it closer to the plan? Where does that go? Or the plan. <laughs> Plan, I would say. Plan? Yeah. We're okay with plan. I don't care exactly where these go, but I want to I want to share what we have here. An estimate is a guess about the time, the value, the quantity. It might be a reasonable guess. So I'll move that one over there. About the time, the value, the quantity, or the cost of something. It's an approximate. So let's move that over. Does that make sense? Sure. A guess? It's a pro an approximate guess. I'll maybe start with that. It's an approximate guess about the time, the value, the quantity to help us make a plan or to be an aiming point or even to be a contract. Is this a good grouping? Does anybody say this is garbage? We made it. Is this okay? Okay. Because this is one of the things when I do my workshop. I want to make sure we're all on an even playing field. Now, this is probably a little more guess than I normally get, but I will often get about 50% guess, not always. Okay, so this is a good starting point. When I do my workshop, really what I'm trying to do is, um, is somehow the pen fell off of here. What I'm trying to do is get everybody on an even understanding of stuff. 
I don't really care what that understanding is, as long as we have an agreement about what we're thinking. So if we're estimating the time or the value and so on, so we can make a plan and we can maybe get a contract signed, that's what estimates are about. Good enough start. So quickly, no estimates with a question mark. Why would we consider something like no estimates? So I'm going to share these things. I'm going to turn this so I can see my slide thing here a little bit. There's only 83 parts. We're on part one. Okay. And that was just before part one, so now we're on part one. I'm going to do a, a few things here pretty quickly. First of all, this start out as a hashtag. The word no estimate start out as a hashtag. Prior to using that as a hashtag, I used the concept of asking people to consider some of the practices that we follow without questioning. And I have a list of about five or six of those. It was part of a bigger talk that I gave on having agile, what I call agile success. The ability to get projects done relatively uh, at low cost, rapidly, uh, with continual feedback from actual users, and all the things I would do to get a project what I would call successful. And then part of it is recognizing some of the things that um, don't deliver value to us. And there's some practices, five or six practices that we do without questioning those practices. And one of them was estimates. So I would just ask, you know, what about this practice? What about that practice? What about estimates? Have we scrutinized our estimates useful to us or not? So, no estimates, I can think of the hashtag as being a placeholder for having a conversation that I want to have with lots of people about the sorts of things that we do without questioning. So that's why I used the hashtag. It was just part of my thinking on how am I going to find other people I can communicate with. And matter of fact, it's a funny thing. I'm now a world traveler and I speak all, I'm literally all over the world except I haven't made it to Antarctica yet and I haven't made it to Africa. But I've made it to every other continent and uh, it started in Malmo when I got invited to speak at Oradev. Has anybody ever been to Oradev? It is a great conference. They invited me based on my hashtags I was using of mob programming and no estimates. So it exactly did for me what I wanted. I wanted a bigger conversation. Yes? Did not Facebook try to ban all hashtags because the word hashtag contained the word hash? I don't know if that's true or not, but we can probably Google that. We'll do that after the meeting. So this is the issue, is that I just want a place to gather to have a conversation, just like we're doing here. But I wanted to be bigger than my local area. So I started with this hashtag in December of 2012. There was somebody else who had used this hashtag a year or two earlier, but this was the first place I used it. And I said, I'd written an article that was for uh, Ron Jeffries. It was at that link that was at the end of this tweet that's still in Twitter. I didn't try to be controversial. It just happens that it is controversial. Um, it was used for that purpose. It attracted a lot of people. And that's what I wanted it to do. And I got the controversy for sure, for free. This was a bonus, because I didn't realize how important that would be in getting an audience for us to talk about these things. So that's what the hashtag's about. I don't care about the hashtag. The hashtag's just a placeholder for a bigger conversation. So I always share that at the beginning of most of my talks. Uh, what interests me most is that we find a way to create an environment where great things will happen. And this is a quote, I've been using this since I was in my late 20s. I learned it from somebody that uh, was teaching me some stuff and he basically told me, the stuff that you want to learn from me isn't what's valuable. This is what's valuable. Now he taught me a lot of stuff, but I, I've kept this with me in my entire life. If we read it for software, perhaps, it would say the object isn't to create great software, it's to be in that wonderful state which makes great software inevitable. Basic idea can be used for almost anything. It's about having an environment where good things will happen. And if we put in an environment where good things will happen, they will happen. If we make it where everybody can excel in their life and everybody can excel in their work, then we're going to get really good results. And if we don't find a way to do that, we're just fighting it all the time. And nothing good will happen. Or rarely will good things happen. Okay. So I want to be very specific about what we're discussing. Okay. This is part of the exercise we just did. So this is, this is what the, um, the CTOs came up with. Notice how many words they use. I've given the same instruction. There's one, informed guess. 
current best guess. They're trying to qualify the term. A guess about how long something will take. They do two post-it notes worth of information. An approximate <laughs> amount of something. A quantified guess with a confidence interval. So what is a confidence interval? Does anybody know? It's a guess about how wrong you are. It's a guess about our guess, <laughs> right? It's a guess saying, well, maybe we're 70% confident our guess is OK. What does that mean? It means, like, would you get on an airplane that has a 70% chance of landing safely? You know, it basically says, all bets are off. Um, <coughs> approximation of future effort. Or a disapproval machine. A what? Yes, yes, but I won't say that in a family setting. <laughs> right? Ballpark value, which is the same thing as a swag. What is a swag? Scientific. Wild ass guess. I'm pretty sure it's swinging wild ass guess. It could be. So a swag essentially is we're going to use some kind of a qualifier to say this is a meaningful guess because we did some scientific process. But in reality, it just means a wild guess. Best guess, educated guess. That's another good one. What's you want our worst guess? You know, when we say best guess, uh, my guess that I feel comfortable with. An educated guess at how long can we do that with a prediction of time. What is a prediction of time? A guess. So I grouped these all together as guess, and these were the outliers. And I think actually what it takes to do it might be a guess. But that, that's a little too, that's actually what it will take rather than a guess of what it will take. Best case time to complete. Are our estimates always the best case? And if we're betting on the best case, how, what's our confidence level on the best case? It's got to be pretty low. Matter of fact, if you do that actual uh, work breakdown, a work structure breakdown, and you do some kind of a, a real estimating uh, methodology, you're probably going to find out that to get something into a reasonable confidence level, like above 80%, it's never going to be your best guess, ever. Uh, when, answer to when is it? When is the end? Time resource based. When will you be done? A promise. Okay. These were CTOs. What a difficult world they live in. Who is the first person to get fired when something goes wrong in a company nowadays? These guys. Because they're, they're always under the gun. If something goes wrong, they get another person. Okay, so this is the way I'm going to put it. We are discussing estimates of time, cost, effort, or complexity <laughs> regarding a described piece of software, a story, a feature, a project, a bug fix, to be developed created, worked on, or whatever. This narrows it down. We're not going to be discussing value. I'm not going to do estimates of cost and estimates of value. That's too big. Estimates of value, in my opinion, are, are overwhelmingly problematic, more so than estimates of cost. So I don't even know how to get close to estimating value. Or I should say that slightly differently. I don't know how anybody gets close on estimating value. This may cost us a little bit closer to something that we can work with. So I don't want to get outside of this realm. So I brought it down this. Estimate is a guess of the amount of time, work time or elapsed time, to create a project, a feature, a story, or do some bit of work in developing software. So that's what we're discussing today. So people will say, yeah, but when I get my kitchen redone, I'm not talking about the kitchen. When I'm going to buy a car, I want to know, that's not what we're talking about. I'm going to need to go back and get my car fixed. I need to know how much that will cost, how successful are those estimates, by the way, and so on and so on. I don't want to talk about all those things. We're just talking about software, and we're talking about the amount of time, work time or less. So let's do a simple activity. Give me an estimate. Somebody, three months from today, on three months from today, you will start this bit of work. You write your name on a on a white index card with a blue fountain pen, about how long is that going to take to do? Three months from today, you're going to start on this. How long will it take to do? Well, or the three months into building the time. No, but we're going to start in three months. You have an idea. That was my question, yeah. You had a question? But my question was, are we, are, we, are we estimating the effort after three months' time? The effort to do this work when we start three months from now. How much time? A few seconds. Two hours. 
Two hours. What else? Anything? Is that, is that our range? An estimate is often a range. A few seconds to two hours. Do we have the pen? Do we have the card? What are the prerequisites? Ah, so you're, kind of, you're sort of catching on to what this is about. <laughs> Three months from now, it's going to take us a very small amount of time if we figure everything out ahead of time. So let's do it slightly differently. Right now, you have to write your name on a white index card with a blue fountain pen. How long is that going to take you? Somebody tell me. <coughs> Where can I find a white index card? <coughs> it me two hours to get one. Two hours to get a white index card. Well, to, to get my signature with a blue fountain pen on an index card. Okay, so you'll have to find the blue fountain pen, and you're going to have to find the white index. Does anybody here have a blue fountain pen? I have a blue fountain pen. I've got that. Who's you have that here? Card? Can I see it? Where Not on me. Oh, I'll have oh. to go to Maya now. But so I mean, how long is that going to take? That's about 30 minutes. Okay, now, you, don't, you didn't even ask the important questions. Did I mean a fountain pen that's blue in color, or a fountain pen that has blue ink in it? <laughs> and you didn't ask me, is it a white index card, or can it have a white index card with red lines and a blue line on it? What is our requirement? What is the size of the index card? There's a lot here we don't know about. So this is the kind of one of the issues in software development. We have the work time, the actual effort to do it. If we knew we were going to do this three months from now, we could find out the requirements, make sure we have the blue index card, or the white index card, available at the right size. We can find out, was it blue ink or just the blue pen? And then once we got that all together, then we can do the work. Do you have a question? Yeah. Would I'm you... not actually asking you to do this. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> and then, uh, would you like to include the time needed for the estimate to be included in this estimate? Yeah, that should be. <laughs> Thank you for coming, though. So, let's finish this up. I want to understand one thing about estimates. If we estimate it would take 12 days to do something, are we actually talking about the time to do the work, or are we talking about the time that will elapse while we're doing the work? Thank you for coming. So let's look at this. The amount of time to do the actual work, including the including time, not including time waiting. This is what I would consider actual work time. Elapsed time is how much the amount of time that it takes I'll read from over here, that passes from the beginning of the actual start of the work until it's done. These are two different things. I've had many developers ask how long it will take to do something. And what's meant by that is, what is the actual time of doing the work? And then they use that to put on a chart that will determine how much time will it take to do this project. But the developer wasn't, didn't realize that there's going to be a lot of interruption in doing that work. So once they start on it, who's going to keep them from getting interrupted? Who's going to keep them from being, getting pulled off that to go help a vice president? <coughs> Who's going to, who is going to, how does the developer know that that day the person they're counting on to help them with the work will be homesick? There's lots the developer can't know when they get that estimate. So this is just something I want to point out. We often think an estimate is about how long it will take from beginning to end, which we can never know. And this we can hardly know anyways. And there's so many things to interfere with this, that's a problem. So I'm just laying a little bit of a groundwork for this. I usually do another um, activity at this time. And I think I want to go ahead and do it. Yes. Um, yeah, let's do this. We have enough time to do this. I don't have to cover everything today, right? <laughs> okay. I can cover some next time. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> so let's do this as an exercise where we'll group up in groups of about four people. Try to work with four, three other people that you think you can get along with. This poor gentleman is sitting alone. Somebody will have to invite him in. And what I want you to do is to take and write as many post-it notes following. I'll show you my rules on post-it notes. One quick second here. One word. <laughs> One word is good, but we won't be able to do that with this. But these rules at the bottom here, if you can see. One idea per sticky note. Make it easy to read, use as few words as possible, not just one word, and use capital letters. This makes it easy for us to read them as we try to group them. All right, so what is an estimate? No, we don't want to do that exercise. We already did that mostly, didn't we? I want to take three minutes to do this exercise. I just have to get to the uh, slide for it.
Why do we do estimates? Oh, actually, let me ask a question real quickly. How many of you have been asked to do an estimate? How many of you have asked others to do an estimate? About half or a little more on the half there. Almost everybody's been asked to do an estimate. So why do we do estimates? You should know. Take three minutes, get as many separate post it notes per team. You should get at least four per team. Let's gather that in. stuff to give feedback to management. Do you know another word for feedback? What does it mean to feed back? To feed back. Nobody's guessing. <coughs> Share information. To vomit it out again. <laughs> I'm sorry to be so crude, especially when you're eating chips. But um, feedback's an interesting thing to me. Promise. It's a promise. So these are dysfunctions, I would say. Uh, learned behavior is what we do. That's kind of a sad thing. Um, ass assuaging fears and for security. Could those kind of go with this grouping here? That's about the dysfunction. We, well, we'll do a quote from Bjarte Boosness in a little bit. But I think that's sort of similar to this. It's uh, to, to have an idea. What does that mean? Was that your group? Uh, idea of how, how to uh, plan, or I mean, uh, how to. So it's to help us plan. Yeah. I'm not really sure. So, but here we have to write a quotation. So that's kind of related. So maybe I'll flip it around. We, we need to come up with an idea so we can write a quotation. What's the quotation for? Getting money. So it's to get work from somebody else. We're going to give them a quote as how much this is going to cost them. When you give somebody a quote with software, do you say, we estimate your project might cost about this, or do you say, here's how much your, your project will cost? Here's my, how much you'll pay. Here's how much you'll pay. <laughs> Boy, who's taking the risk in that one? Yeah. Because if you get that contract, you are going to be maybe the lowest priced bidder, and everyone else needs something you don't know. That's troubling. To split work. So that's about planning. That's about planning resources, don't you think? To share the work, to tool to recognize the work. Okay, that's a little different. But these are about planning the work. Tell me when I'm wrong. I just want us to have a, I don't care how we group these, I want to get them grouped in a way that makes sense. To get funded, that's kind of part of some of these things up here. To estimate the cost, well, we estimate to estimate the cost. Why do we estimate the cost? That's, I kind of say that's like a non-answer. I'm sorry, whoever this was. <laughs> sorry. To state why the team exists. Wow, that's an interesting one. I'm not sure that's a fixed price project. So that's going to go with the quotation. Do any of you work on fixed price projects? Yikes, how's that going for you? Pretty good? Awesome. You have to, you have to bid high to make money in that world. Or know how to extend the contract with them paying you more. Those change are, requests. Change requests. Okay, so I would suggest that's a dysfunction, but I'm not going to go so far to say it's totally unethical, yeah. but just mildly unethical. Okay. I'm really, I'm just making fun, okay? You know everything I say as a joke is true, but I put it in such a way that it doesn't seem like I'm serious about it. 
<laughs> to give feedback to the customer. There's we are with the feedback again. Here's to give feedback to the management, to give feedback to the customer. <coughs> well, I'm not sure I'm on a group those. Uh, customer ex to handle customer expectations. I often hear it as to manage customer expectations. How much do you enjoy having your expectations managed? How many of you have kids? Kid asks at Christmas time, they ask, I want a pony. And what do you tell them? Well, we don't know what Santa will bring, but he might not bring a pony. We're trying to manage their expectations. <laughs> Customer cost. So we're trying to figure out the price. Get the, a lot of kids get the pony in Sweden. Some kids get the pony. It's, there's a lot of extra ponies. Popular. Do any of you have a pony? Or your kids? You have one. Uh, your kids have one. So, you know. You bought it yourself. Okay. Well, that's okay. The first thing, the first substantial thing I bought was a mini bike when I was 12 or 13 years old. I worked, got a job, went and got a mini bike. Get delivery commitment. Okay, we'll put it, we'll put it there. Is this, re is this a resource allocation? Um, promise, delivery, date. <laughs> We do have that. Is that part of that one? We have that here somewhere. Where was that? Like that about here? Yeah. We'll go ahead and do that. To get a discussion about the work started. So I'm going to put that close to there. About the work started. So we're doing the estimate after we've started the work. To, to get the discussion started. To get the discussion started about the work to get the discussion about the work started. Okay. Yeah. Do or not do. This is to make a decision of a do or not do decision. So that's like, should we do project A or not? Or should we do project A or should we do project B? Risk management. Hmm. Is that, I don't know. I'll leave that as a unique thing. Identify risk. Do estimates identify risk? <laughs> Somebody tell me. You need a separate. So I think there's an interesting thing here. We'll maybe we'll talk about it if we have time. We're using to identify risk and to for risk management. You can use things like three point estimations. That's a risk management. The uh, estimate is a guess, and we're going to use it for important things like managing risk. Is it important to manage risk, by the way, or is it important to take risks? Do you make money managing risks or do you make money taking risks? That's an interesting thing to question. A tool for starting a discussion, they said it a little nicer there. A tool for starting a discussion about a task. So we have that there to get this discussion started. Identify resource need. Know before planning. So this is all about planning and to estimate the cost that moved out. Performance tracking, create pressure on the dev team. So I'm going to put them, that's almost a, um, that's almost a uh, dysfunction, but I've seen that many times. I've seen a lot of uh, management types say, you said it would take two weeks. Now it's taking three weeks. You think we should keep paying you? That sort of thing. That's problematic. Performance so tracking. Performance <laughs> tracking. So we're going to, what's going to happen to a team that gets dinged for not meeting their estimates? What are they going to start doing? Blowing up their estimates. They're going to start increasing their estimates. So this is easily gained. And then somebody's going to argue, three weeks? You think that'll take three weeks? Last time you said two weeks. Yeah, and last time we didn't get it done in two weeks. We're starting down a slippery slope with that one. That's a high uh, dysfunction. Is this good? Can we do OK? We need to talk about these things. We are now saying we use this for planning. Dependency uh, planning, resource allocation, prioritizing tasks, splitting the work, sharing the work, promising a delivery date based on approximate guesses about the time it will take to do something. Is that reasonable? Because we start out with that little thing up there. A reasonable, a reasonable approximation of the time it will take. Is it ever really reasonable? Well, I hope this isn't too negative. How much longer should we go? Another half hour? Is that enough? 
Is this too if much? We want to have time for discussions. I think maybe we do another fifteen minutes. Fifteen so minutes. We can discuss it. Okay. Because you want, do you guys want to personally fight about this? Yeah, I think yeah. 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 Okay, so software development, we'll move this out of the way. I like that. I don't know, I'm actually looking pretty lean and tricky. <laughs> sure way to do In software development, estimates are often used to predict the future. All this, what we're talking about, almost everything here, we're talking about somehow is we want to know information about a future that isn't knowable. When will it be done? How much will it cost? What can we get done for this during this sprint? That's something a lot of people want to know. That doesn't make any sense to me. That's something we should be talking about. How many people do we need to hire? That's one thing that we often see. We do this to determine how many people are we going to need on this job. We either need to get them from somewhere else in the company, or we need to get a budget to hire these people, something like that. Whoops. What can we get done for this much money? That's one thing that people often ask. They want the estimates so they can determine how much are we going to get done for this money that we have. Is that a reasonable approach? We need to talk about these things. Is there some alternative? But basically, <coughs> all the results that we normally get from doing estimates is information. It's what we do with the information that's important. And that's mostly what we're talking about here. What do we do with this information? So what do we do with it? We use them to make decisions. That's what most of this was about, making decisions. We need to make decisions so we decide whether to do project A or project B, or go or no go, and so on. Is that a good decision to be making? Is that a re reasonable decision to be for us to make? Or is that maybe the wrong kinds of decisions to make? That's what I'm asking. OK, sometimes we use it as a spark to ignite a discussion. We had at least two or three of that over. So these are the things I normally hear. We're using these estimates to make decisions or as a spark for conversation. So I would pose this as we're not going to take too much more time. Does this really help us make decisions? And a more important thing, you know, does anybody here have a coin? Do you have a coin? Do you use coins in Sweden? No. You don't use money at all here. <laughs> you just use credit cards. No, no he's got yeah, a coin. Can we swish you? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Okay. I'm going to be really serious for a moment here. Is there a heads and a tails on here? Good. We use estimates to help us make decisions. This is a decision-making tool right here that I can sell you, and I'll split, split the profits for you, for um, 20. No? How much no, is it? No, two. because they're two. new as well. So two. I haven't seen them. For this is for two, two kronar. Yeah. Yeah. So that's worth like half, half of a cigarette. Is it that you uh, know, the, 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 the filter. Yeah. <laughs> you can buy this for two quarter kroner. It's a decision making tool. And I'm really serious about that. Who wants to buy it? Does anybody want that? So here's the thing for the amount of money that we would invest in this, we have something that will help us make decisions. Do we need help making decisions? Do we need help making decisions? No, we. Yeah, I think I, I think that you need help in making decisions. Okay, so, so you know this is a trick question. You don't want to just dive in so quickly. This is what I would modify to say. We need help making good decisions. We don't need this will help you make a decision. Should we do this project or not? Heads or tails. You know? Then we make the decision. We don't need any help to do that. We can make that who's what is this yours? Thank you so much. Oh no. I I'll, I'll never find a use for it. <laughs> <laughs> is this a brand new coin? I, I didn't even know it existed. <laughs> there you go. So he'll sell that for you for, two, two, three, four, for 20. So this is the important part of this whole discussion is, are we considering the right things or not? That's what this is about. If we need to know how long something will take, the decision that we are going to make based on that information is that a useful decision to us? Or do we need to find a better kind of decision to make? So if we are working within a process that requires that we use estimates, guess what? We need to use estimates. So now we need to scrutinize. It's not do we need an alternative to estimates. It's do we need an alternative to the kinds of decisions that we make based on our estimates. 
If we don't need those kinds of decisions anymore, then we don't need estimates. So if we have, what, five minutes left? At the most, two minutes left? Five. Okay. So we're on the second part. There's only 83 parts. I think I'll skip this one. How it started for me, this is a story that I tell about when I first noticed how dysfunctional. Maybe this will be all we'll cover. We'll do this real quick. Okay. I got on this job in 1999, 17 years or so ago. It was a large critical project for a company. It was so critical that I think their failure to produce on this um, was enough to cause them to eventually go out of business, but I could be wrong, but that's the reason. There were 200 developers on this. They were brought in to write a system for this company. There were, it was pre-Agile. This was before we were, had a term in Agile. So it was IID, which is incremental iterative development. We were going to do six-week iterations that were broken up into three two-week periods. Two weeks of design and code, or design, two weeks of coding, and two weeks of integrate and test. During the design period, we'd be doing some estimates, and we would be trying to understand the requirements. And then we would do a lesson learned at the end, and we would do it over again. This was supposed to be a three-month project. How long are three-month projects, by the way? Does anybody know? How long is a three-month <coughs> project? One year. A year at least. <laughs> so this one went, I think, uh, something like two and a half years. Okay, so we went out on the first iteration. Everybody there almost <coughs> younger than me by about half. And this was 20 years ago almost. So that was, these were a lot of very young programmers. We charged off to do our work. We did our design. We kind of estimated what we could get done. We tried to understand the requirements. That's what you need to do before you design. We went into code. We coded everything. And then we uh, went through the test cycle, which was really test and fix, test, test and fix. It's supposed to be integrating. There wasn't much integrating going on. And then we did our lessons learned. So in the lessons learned, I noticed two, really three important things that we noted were not good. The first was our estimates were off. What do we do about that when we see our estimates were off? What should we do? Practice yes, or what did you do? Yes, better. Let's get better at estimates. So we need to get better at estimating. That's what they decide they need to do. Now I wasn't a consultant there, I was just another one of the contractors programming on this thing. The other thing I noticed was that two two things combined. The requirements were clear, which means we didn't understand the requirements. Or the requirements kept changing. Once we started clarifying them and doing the work, we were having a problem. We didn't understand them well up front because they weren't clear enough, maybe, and then they kept changing after that. So, what do we do about that problem? Get better requirements. Get better requirements, or in some cases, get better at understanding your requirements. And what do you do about the second one? Change control. Right? You're not allowed to change. We're just we're going to estimate what you asked for, and that's it. So, there you go. That's what we decided to do. So we charged off to do the work. I know it's a little bit low for some of you, but we need to get better at understanding the requirements and controlling the changes. So we need to figure that stuff out. So we worked hard to get better. We spent a few days getting some training and studying on how to get better at estimating and to get better at understanding and keeping things from changing. I was already old enough to know that this was probably not the bottom of the problem. We went off and charged off to do our work. I didn't say anything. I wanted to keep the job. We went off and charged off to do our, our work again. Uh, we did our lessons learned. Well, what did we find out? I don't even have to ask. It was exactly the same thing. Has anybody seen this kind of a pattern? So we're going to be closing with this. So this is the best that I can do in such a short amount of time. Is we're going to understand this. Okay, so what did we do? We worked hard to get better at the things that they said we need to get better. But me being the older guy, I guess I was 45 or something at the time, they, um, I knew we were already in for it. Because we weren't working on the problem. We were working on symptoms of the problem. So we worked to get better at estimating. We, we worked to get a better understanding, locking things down. We went out to charge up to do our work. It's the third lessons learned. There were two big problems. What were they? <laughs> Estimates <laughs> off. Right? But, uh, <laughs> Estimates were off, and everything kept changing, because we didn't understand what they wanted in the first place. We don't need to look at this slide. What we basically have is a pattern. 
This is the important part of this part of the lesson. For each iteration, we would get the same lessons learned and try to solve them in the same way. And you've heard Einstein's definition of this. What's Einstein's definition? Insanity. This is insanity. We keep doing the same thing over and over. This is a pattern. Two things you can't tell a pat pattern from two things. Matter of fact, if I were to say with one thing, what's the pattern? What is the pattern here? We don't know, right? But what if we were to add these guys? Now what's the pattern? It's like a sticky stickers with Fs. What if I add this as part of the pattern? Now what's the pattern? You can hold it in your hand. What else? You're holding it. I am holding it. Plastics. They have, these all have black in them. So the pattern changes based on what's our sampling. When you have one thing, it's hard to say there's a pattern. I already knew this pattern because I'd seen it before myself. I didn't bring it up. I didn't talk about it because I was afraid that, that they wouldn't like me in this place if I did that. The second time around, I could see it was definitely a pattern. The third time, I knew we were in a pattern. We were solving for the symptom, and we weren't solving for the problem. So I actually brought it up the third time around. I said, you know, this is a pattern I've seen before. We're solving for the symptom, not solving for the problem. I don't think the problem is that our estimates are off. There's something else. I don't think the problem is that, that we can't control our changes. There's something else. After that moment, as I would walk through the halls, all these young people that I've been getting to know as friends avoided me. I would walk down the hall, and they would kind of it would be like the parting of the Red Seas. And, I, and they would just go around me. So I finally cornered one of the young guys. <laughs> the younger they are, the less ready they are for some old guy to, to capture them. So I, I, I actually asked him, this is a, the honest truth. I asked him, why won't anybody talk to me? What do you think he said? Does anybody Probably want to guess? Better. That's real close. The manager said not to talk to you. So this told me this was a much, much bigger problem than not seeing the pattern. What is it a problem? What is that problem? Trust. Trust. Lack of trust. I would say not wanting to deal with the pattern. Yeah, but why, why didn't the they, I mean, why were you not accepted by the manager? I was pointing out something that they didn't want to have to deal with. Or, or they didn't trust that you had the right intentions. Oh, that's possible. I, I, they had no better way to do it. Didn't I think that they were just managing a project. I'll, I'll throw this in. It's going to be on uh, film. Most of what we do for management is about making it easy to manage things, not easy to get the work done. Sure. So we have to be really careful about that. Most of what we do for management it's not about making it great for us to get work done. It's making it easy for management to do the management work. I'm not against management. I'm not against managers. But I'm against that idea that we are doing things just because it makes it easy to manage things. We need to figure out a better way. I'm not going to cover any more except for this. I gave a name to this pattern. And I've seen it now over and over. I started taking notes. That was in 1999. I've seen it dozens, if not a hundred or more times. Probably hundreds of times. I call this the cycle of continuous no improvements. <laughs> <laughs> this is that pattern. If you put arrows on this, you know, we are just going to continually not get the thing done. This is what this lesson is about. Oh, you want to get a picture of that? I'll let you do that. Is that actually taking good pictures of that? Yeah. You could probably find these slides somewhere online, or at least some chunk of them. This is the idea of symptoms versus problems. How often we're dealing with the symptoms instead of the actual problems. Because it's a lot easier to see a symptom and deal with it than to try and figure out what the actual problem is. I'm not saying looking for problems is necessary. Not always. But this is the idea. The symptom, if the symptom was estimates are off, what is the problem? I'm not asking that right now. But that's the kind of thing we need to do. If we're saying that the requirements aren't clear, that's a symptom, what's the problem? If we're saying the symptom requirements keep changing, that's a symptom, what's the problem? So the, the uh, symptom being estimates are off, the problem isn't we're not good at estimates. Because if that's just a symptom, it doesn't matter how good we are at estimates. What's the underlying problem? So I think we're done because we're only up to the third part. So there we go. Good enough?